And good afternoon from St. Louis, Missouri, and, and good the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home of the Missouri from St. Louis, Missouri, and the home
universal prevention program for adolescents. That said, there are some very effective options for impacting the problem. So if you look at, for example, Amazing Alternatives, it's a great program. It uses a combination of education and life skills, and it does show that kids who go through Amazing Alternatives intervention are more likely to delay their onset of use. Now, coloring all of the, the substance abuse use interventions, there has been a long history of using technology in these, these interventions, and that's really the area that fascinates me the most and which we'll, we'll begin talking about. Because we know that gaming is a very important part of adolescents' lives. We know that children and adolescents are spending about seven hours a day interacting with media. And they're doing this across multiple devices, whether it's the television, the computer, their tablets, their smartphones, they're consuming a lot of media. And we know that a good portion of this media is games. 85% of the top 700 games, popular apps on the App Store are games. About 97% of all adolescents report playing games about an hour a day. And the gaming industry as a whole is huge. Last year, they collected $25 billion in revenue. That's like two and a half times the size of the box office movie industry. So we know that gaming is really important. That said, there's been a lot of folks who have worried about this trend, of, about how much kids are playing games, because they're, they feel there can be some deleterious effects of game, gaming. And so one of the things that they worry about is this pathological use. In fact, about 7% of college students meet the criteria for pathological use in that they're playing games to a point where they really feel like they can't stop playing. We also know that many of the games instill sexist attitudes. Uh, many of them are very heavily violent in, in nature. And there is some research that shows that kids who play games are more likely to have some problems with impulsivity. And so even though gaming is so important in our society, there, there's some concerns about it. That said, there are also, also some significant benefits. And so research has shown that kids who play games, they, they do have some cognitive enhancement effects. Games can also be designed to enhance social connection, uh, to improve motivation, and actually to, uh, for educational purposes as well. And so the research as a whole has shown that screen time, regardless of the content, it doesn't necessarily correlate with antisocial development. So that's good. And because of that, there has been this whole move of using games in education. And you might have heard this term gamification. How can we turn educational content into a game to help enhance learners' ability to understand and retain material? And this has been a, a very popular movement. And even industries like the car industry has uh, jumped on the gamification bandwagon where they have made games for their workforce to help them learn the, the the procedures for doing their, their job. Healthcare researchers are also using gamification to help their patients learn about their, their medical conditions. And then there's a whole field in the area of education of serious games. And here, this is using game-like scenarios to provide instructions. And there are many examples. Educators all over the country are using these serious games in areas like reading and math and physics, where the kids are playing a game, but embedded in this game is some very important educational curriculum. So knowing that, researchers have also been really interested in using, then, games in the area of healthcare, and how can healthcare games lead to improved outcomes. Uh, talk to you about a couple of, I think, notable examples. In one game, it was designed for young kids who were diagnosed with cancer. And the, the game 
taught them about their diagnosis and actually they found that the kids who played the game actually not only did they know more about their diagnosis but they were actually more adherent to their treatment. Similarly, there's been many games for the domain of HIV prevention and I think this is interesting that not only does it these game involvement in these games improve knowledge but it also can improve the player's self-efficacy in their feelings of being able to no negotiate safer sex situations, condom use, and things like this. Another, I think, really interesting example of using games to improve healthcare is a research where they got some elderly folks to uh, play the Wii game Dance Town, and after a period of use, they found that these elderly folks, they had improved coordination and decreases in their cholesterol. So gaming, healthcare gaming is really a, a burgeoning field. It's been very popular. And in fact, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has a, an entire granting mechanism focused solely on healthcare games. Now, my background is, has been over the many years looking at specifically the area of substance abuse and addiction. And so I'm interested in how can we use these healthcare games in that area. So some, some of these early examples, like I said, the substance abuse researchers have been using technology for a very long time. And some of these early examples, like the Say No with Donnie program, that Life Moves, examples of interactive videos where the users can watch scenarios and watch them unfold and make decisions about how these scenarios unfold. Then researchers have used the the programs to do more structured interventions, like the Refuse to Use program. And then a colleague of mine down in Houston, uh, Leslie Miller at Rice, she has done, her and her team have done some fantastic science education, substance abuse games. Their re reconstructor programs are, are, I think, top rate examples of using games to provide this, this education in this area. Now, one thing that hasn't been done a lot is looking at the gender impact on these substance abuse education games. It, it, it's not something that researchers have studied a lot, and I think it's important to because we do know that there are some differences between boys and girls and how they learn. Um, there's a difference in their deductive versus inductive reasoning styles, their communication styles, their sensitivities to group dynamics, and their preferences for collaborative versus competitive activities. And so for my research, I was very interested in looking at how can we capitalize on these inherent gender differences within the context of a health game to provide information about the science of addiction. So when we look at specifically at gender differences and video games, we see that boys typically spend more time playing than girls. And boys and girls have different preferences. So girls like the social and educational games more. Boys like sports and, and, and violent games more. Now, we also know that the, some of these gender differences extend into the area of attitudes towards science. And this is important because it, in my programs, I really want to teach the kids the science of addiction. And so if there's some pre-existing differences in gender about their attitudes towards science, that may make an impact. And we know that there is some definite differences. We're, even to this day, there, there is this underlying stereotype that science is a male endeavor. And this is evident even in early years. So young kids will, will pick up on this. And it impacts their influence on what classes they take and their career choices that they make. So, I've covered a whole bunch of information there on kind of the background leading up to where my work spring from, springs from. We know that middle school is an ideal time to intervene for kids when we're talking about issues of substance use. We know that previous approaches have had some mixed results. We also know that there has been this influence of using technology in the area, and that's really something that I wanted to try to capitalize. And Yet one difference with where I have than a lot of other researchers is I'm not doing a prevention curriculum. More 
more importantly, I'm trying to teach kids the science of addiction. And so whereas other programs are trying to prevent kids from using, I really want to teach them the underlying biology of, of, of the issue. So what did we do? I created a series of video games. And they were, they were all designed to teach this underlying curriculum of the science of addiction. So I had some hypotheses going in. Uh, as a good researcher, I'm thinking that I need to test what, what, what I'm making. And so my hope is that, again, we're looking at knowledge, not behavior, substance use. So I'm hoping that the kids in my intervention are going to learn more than kids who are in a control condition at best. Uh, have to show that. And then I want to show that the gains that they make in knowledge scores last from post, interim post and follow-up scores. And then based on the things that we talked about in gender differences, I'm thinking that girls are going to probably improve more when they're playing collaboratively. And boys will improve more when they play competitively. Those are my hypotheses going in. So let's see how, how things went turned out. So, spend a little bit of time talking to you about developing my intervention. Now this was funded by a NIDA R25 award and the R25 NIDA awards are unique because they're called the Science Education Drug Abuse Partnership Awards where university researchers partner with community organizations to try to provide an educational curriculum. And so that's exactly what I did. I began by creating this core curriculum. What is the true science that I want to teach the kids. What do I feel that after they come through my program, I really want them to know. But I didn't feel comfortable in saying what I, I want them to learn is the definitive answer. I, I need to make sure that other substance abuse researchers across the country felt that I was teaching the, the best science as well. So I, I sent my curriculum to a, a lot of folks to have that reviewed to make sure that it was accurate and up to date. But then I also talked to a whole bunch of educators as well. And I wanted to make sure that the ways that I was going to reach out to the kids was pedagogically sound. And is this a good way to teach them the, the curriculum? And then finally, and this is probably my, one of my favorite parts of the whole process, is then getting the opportunity to talk with the students as well. I needed to get into the mindset of these middle schoolers. Some people say I didn't have a lot, long way to go for that. But I, it's been a while since I've been in middle school. And so I wanted to talk to them and see what kind of games do they like playing now? What kind of media do they interact with? What kind of substance abuse education programs have they had in the past? What did they like about them? What did they not? And so we spent a lot of time talking to the kids as well. But the results of that process then led me with, to this dilemma that I had essentially three competing needs. I had the needs of the students and their need for a fun, engaging, fast-paced game need for the educators who felt that I needed to teach the kids in very certain ways. And then I had the needs of the researchers who said I have to teach good science. And so how do I combine all of those needs into a single program that everyone feels fulfilled with? And so that, that was a, led to then a period of time with my team where we spent a long time brainstorming how can we convey all of this information effectively. By doing these brainstorming sessions, we were able to eventually come up with a very detailed design document that literally went page by page on what these games should look like. Now, in many of my previous NIDA grants, I was able to do a lot of the coding for the intervention. These games were way beyond my abilities. And so we worked with outside contractors to then take our vision and create the interventions themselves. So what were they? There are a series of six interactive video games. And we used flash technology so we could deploy the, the games on the, on the web. And that way they were um, cross-platform compatible and could be used um, by schools all over the country. So here, here's a, a broad overview of, of the games. 
our first game was looking at brain structure and func function as a racing game. Then we had a game devoted solely to neurotransmission, another racing game. Then we looked at the brain reward system, an arcade game. Looked at addiction as in a disease, a maze game. We looked at the genetics of addiction, and that's another arcade game. And then finally, the treatment for addiction, another maze game. Now, this is a lot of content to pack into a single curriculum. And I feel if I can teach the kids all of this, they're going to be walking away with some really important information. So now, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking to you in detail about the types of these games. I mentioned different racing, arcade, and maze games. I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more about them. So, and you see, I, I talk about bacon brains. And I think it's important to note that the name of the, the entire in intervention, bacon brains, that sprung directly from the work that we did with the focus groups with the kids. And they thought it would be just fantastic if our main characters on our, our games would be these robotic pigs. So we went with that. And that became the, the metaphor for all of our games. And so for our racing games, the kids get to guide a robotic pig through a track. And sprinkled across the track, there are various parts that they have to gather. And by gathering them, they, they can complete the, that mission. So for example, um, if the mission was to improve the pig's memory, they had to go around the track and make sure that they gathered the hippocampus. The arcade games have a different style of approach to providing the, the content. The, here, the primary action occurs in the arena. And they, the kids use array to release things out of the arena and collect them in their little piggy bucket at, at the bottom of the screen. And they, they're collecting these objects to win the mission. So for example, in the brain reward system module, they have to collect reinforcers. So things like veggies and sundaes, things that are going to turn on their brain reward system. In the genetics of addiction module, they're collecting nucleus, chromosome, and then finally genes so they can customize their pig. And then finally, in the maze games, the kids have the opportunity to guide their pigs through the studio of, uh, through the basement of a movie studio. And as they're wandering through the studio, they're collecting audio and video clips. They're gathering pork power to allow them to fly through the maze. And interspersed through this activity, there are some matching games to make sure that they're collecting the content. And then once they get all of the discs, they've gone through all the mazes, they proceed to the editing room where they splice together their, their movie and they apply audio and visual effects and then get to view an entire animation of the content for that module. So that's a, a quick overview of the three types. And now um, I had my video guy, Kelly Gregory, he did a little montage for you. Talking, I've been talking about these, but that's kind of in the abstract. Let's take a quick uh, sneak peek at a montage of the videos. Left hemisphere install, right to the pig in language, enable. Neurotransmitter installed, chemical messaging, activated. It's not a personal weakness, but an actual brain disease. Substance abuse is a pattern of drug use that causes problems in people's lives. So I'm hoping that with that little montage, you get the idea that not only are these games fast-paced, kind of funny, really engaging, 
embed a ton of content along the way as well, and something that I had hoped that the kids would really feel an affinity to, like to, to use, and then hopefully, because they're so engaged, learn something along the way. So, what I'd like to now transition to is talk to you, now that you know a little bit about the background of where the, this program has come from and how we develop it, let's talk about the evaluation. Did, was it effective? So I have to say that it took us about five years to pull together all of these interventions, a little longer than I would have hoped, but we got it done. And the, the other, I think, fortunate part w about the evaluation was I was able to secure an agreement with a local charter school here in St. Louis, and they were so fantastic to work for. They, they were very excited to integrate my program into their curriculum that they actually restructured their entire elective period so that we would be able to come to their school the last class period of the day across two entire trimesters we were able to interact with every single student in the in the school. Uh, another really nice thing about this school is they're very involved with the parents. It, it's a school of character and so they they work really hard to make sure that there's good connections between them and the, the community. And the one thing that they do is before classes ever start during uh, at the beginning of the year they have parent-teacher conferences just to have the parents get to know the teachers, know expectations for the year. And the school was so fantastic, they were actually able to help me collect the consent for participating in the research at that time of those initial parent-teacher conferences. And that's just, that was huge. Uh, not many schools would go to the, that length for us. And so it was, I was very grateful for, for their help. And what they ended up doing was they split up their entire student body into 12 separate cohorts that we would have for 10-day sessions. So we were, we, the kids were completely randomly assigned to cohort. There are about 25 kids per group, and mixed, mixed gender and grades. This, these are 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. So here's a, a kind of a timeline of the intervention and how it was set to, to roll out, and we'll go through this step by step. So and initially, I should say that we, were, we conducted procedures in a dedicated classroom. They, they allowed us to use a single classroom throughout the entire year. And they provided laptops so that each kid could ha work on the games by themselves. Again, they, they really went above and beyond. I, I appreciate their help. OK, so we know at the beginning of the year, they were um, assigned to cohorts. And then the, the, at the beginning of the cohort then, we spent a time talking to the kids about the study. We assented them into the study, so we made sure that they understood that they were indeed part of the research and what the goals of the research was. And then um, we assigned them to one of three experimental conditions. And we did this by writing on their assent forms the letters A, B, or C, shuffled up their assent forms, distributed them, collected the top a signature page, they're left with the consent information and a letter of which, to group, which group they were assigned. And we then explained to them that those kids who are assigned to group A, the collaborative, the collaborative group would play on their individual laptop, but alongside their partner. And they would work together to help you know, know which, which brain parts to collect in the maze, where to find different um, parts, how to solve different puzzles in the game, just working closely together. Then the kids who were assigned to group B, we told them that they're playing co um, competitively. And so we said, okay, well, you can trash talk, be, be respectful, but you know, when you do something good, let your partner know. Tell them that you got a high score. Let them know that you found more, more discs than they did. And really encourage them to compete against their partner. And finally, the kids who are in group C, they played a different series of education, science education games, and they did that individually. Then um, the next step was to con collect pretest information. And so what we did was we made sure that before we began the intervention, we had a 
collection of measures that we wanted to uh, deliver to the kids, we had them, we audio recorded all of those questionnaires and then played the, the audio back to the kids while they were filling out the questionnaires online. And that way there's some standardization of the, of the measure taking. So that was the first couple days of class. And then we actually went into um, the actual play. And so this was, I think, really, it was fun for me to watch because I got now to watch the kids playing these games that I had taken so many years to develop. And so we began each class period by telling them what content that they were going to be learning in the game, Re just providing a, a brief overview, reminding them, okay, you, you guys, you're playing collaboratively, you guys, you're playing competitively, you guys, you're playing individually, and then let them interact with the games for, for about 40 minutes. After that 40 minutes, then we did, a, again, another interim assessment to see if they've, what they've learned about the, the core curriculum of that particular game. And then finally, we, uh, the last day of the cohort, we did a post-test where we uh, administered the entire battery once again. Um, and I think this was interesting. I, I, I did have to tell the kids that we would only allow them to play the games during the class period. And I actually had to lock down the, the website so that the games wouldn't be accessible to the kids outside of the class period because I had a number of kids saying that they wanted to go home and play them. And while that's really gratifying as the developer of the game, that knowing that they, they really liked them, as a researcher I knew that that wasn't good science and so we had to lock it down. Now, the plan, original plan for doing this research was then we were going to, at eight weeks, after that post-test, we're going to follow up with the kids and uh, ask them again that, that entire battery of questionnaires. Now, the problem, though, was that because these kids had then moved on to a different elective, the kids, they, all the kids in our one cohort were then scattered across many different electives at the school, and so it didn't really work out as well as we had hoped to bring them back for, again, for that eight-week period. We had only about a 44% follow-up follow rate for that follow-up assessment, and so that, that didn't work out as, as good as we would have liked. So again, to review a little bit about those measures that we, we did, we collected all of our measures online. So because the kids had access to their individual laptops, all the data was collected online via this a secure system called Qualtrics, which allowed them to take the questions on their computer and then all of that data got entered into a large database which is easy, easily exportable to our analysis packages. And that really standardized entry and uh, reduced data entry errors it really facilitated things greatly, I thought. And like again, I said, um, we played audio recordings of each item. That way we were sure that all the kids got the same assessment experience across all the groups. So what, what, what were these measures? We had a set of 10 multiple choice questions for each of the six game modules. And these were the, the core knowledge questions that I really wanted to make sure that the, the kids learn. Now, these questions were aligned directly to the content of our curriculum. And again, Although our curriculum was reviewed by educators and researchers, we also had the same educators and researchers look at our tests as well to make sure that they were well-constructed items that were accurately assessing the things that we wanted to. And then again, we wanted to do these at, again, pre, interim, post, and follow-up. <clears throat> there are another set of questions that we had because remember, talking earlier about the importance of gender and how that might impact uh, responses to our intervention. I wanted to look at some measures of gender and so we used what was called the Children's Pers Personal Attributes Questionnaire. It's a, a set of 21 questions, things like I almost always stand up for what I believe in, I'm a gentle person, things like these. And this, this questionnaire has been well researched and has 
three definitive scales that kind of all lie on the direction of either masculinity, femininity, or androgyny. And so we thought that assessing the kids in, in this dimension might provide some insight into our, how they respond to our measure. Now, because again, this is not a prevention intervention, this is a science education intervention, I really wanted to know what the kids thought about science. And so I used a measure that we've used for many years now to ask what the kids feel about science. So how do they like it? So I enjoy my science class or things like doing science often makes me feel nervous. And in this way I got a feel for how, what kind of affinity the kids have for, for science. Then because these are again games, I want to know wh what kind of experience they have with computer games. So I uh, had 10 questions, things like I like playing computer or video games or I would describe myself as a gamer and hopefully those questions would also provide us some insight on how these kids use games and imp impact their attitudes towards our intervention. So we, that's kind of an overview of the evaluation plan that now I can talk to you a bit about the results. So again, we had 12 10-day cohorts with between 18 and 25 kids each cohort. This lasted for the first two tri entire trimesters of the school's year. All, all kids were eligible at the school and almost all of them, I think we only had like a 1% uh, refusal rate, less than that. So who were these kids? They, um, we had a very nice balance between male and female, a little bit more male than female, but fairly, fairly well distributed. Similarly, we had um, looked at their grade fairly well distributed across 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. So that's good. I got an, a very nice sampling of kids uh, to uh, participate in this. We're looking at about 244 kids total. So the first thing I like to do when, I'm, when I have my research data is to look overall. I have a lot of hypotheses that we talked about earlier, but I need to know just overall, did the intervention make some impact? And so that was really the, f the first set of analyses that we looked at. And I'm really grateful to see that we see that at the beginning, and this is important, that at the beginning, everyone is statistically the same. That they don't know a lot about my curriculum of the science of addiction. But then over time, whether they're playing Bacon Brains collaboratively or competitively, no statistical difference here. They're learning a lot compared to those kids in the control condition who don't learn much at all. And then you see this very classic learning curve where they learn a lot and then it declines a little bit over time. I couldn't ask for any better outcomes than that. I feel really good that at baseline I know that my curriculum has taught the kids something. But like, like we've been going through, I have a lot of data. So let's see, let's break it down a little bit more. So again, one important thing to look at is attitudes towards science and does that have an impact on, on the outcomes of our inter intervention? And we do see this, uh, I think this was interesting, although I, to be honest, I can't really explain why it might be, but we did see that seventh graders had significantly poorer attitudes towards science than the eighth graders. Why this is, don't know, but that is a, a statistical difference. The interesting fact, though, was it only predicted our outcomes in a certain way in which that the better, you ha better attitudes you had towards science, the more you typically learned on our intervention. So that, that's a good thing. Looking at computer gaming experience, and I thought this was really interesting. So in this case, eighth graders were playing significantly less than the sixth graders. And so while this is a significant effect, it, what we did see is it did not have any overall impact on our intervention. So regardless of the amount of time that kids were playing games, didn't really affect the outcomes of, of our study. Now, sometimes it's just 
grateful. I, I feel good when research comes out the way you think it probably should. And this, I think this graph is just a classic example of that because I wanted to see how kids are using computers and looking at it break, broken down by gender. And we see that when we're looking at kids who play on the computer three or more hours a day, boys play in video games, oh, over 70% of them reported playing three or more hours of video games a day. Girls, not even 50% reporting that much. However, if you look at involvement in social media, not even 45% of the boys saying that they're spending three hour or more hours on social media, but over 65% of the girls. Again, it's fascinating. It's just exactly what you'd expect, but it did not have any direct impact on outcomes for our intervention. Now, gender, again, was an important thing for us to look at. And remember, I talked about the personality questionnaire. We did see some significant differences like you'd expect that males scored significantly lo lower on the femininity scale than the females. But again, this, didn't, this particular measure did not have any impact on our outcomes. So now we've gone through quite a number of intermediate variables to try to get at what it is that's driving those differences in kids. And so now I, I'll show you this graph that I think really explains what, what has happened here? Again, okay, so what we're looking at is that boys are blue and uh, girls are the red. At baseline, there is no difference. Everyone doesn't know a lot about our curriculum. And if you look at it overall, it looks like, yeah, we have that traditional learning curve where kids go up and then there's a little decline over time from pre, interim, and post. But let's break it down a little bit more and we see. I have to say that things like grade, attitudes towards science, the gender things, measures didn't impact. The, the, the things that drove the differences in response to our intervention were the gender and the way that the kids were playing the games. So that girls, pretty much whatever I threw at them, they're learning. Boys, this was really interesting, I thought. So the, the boys in the control condition, they're not learning so much. Boys in the collaborative condition, they, my curriculum taught them a significant amount of information in the collaborative condition. But oh my goodness, the boys in the competitive condition, they learned significantly more than the boys in the control. So again, some significant gender differences in the way that the kids played the games and how that impacted knowledge scores. So I also want to then go in and say, well, yeah, they learned something, but did they like it? And I'm glad to say that, yeah, they, they liked it quite a bit, actually. We do see this weird thing where there's not a lot of difference in enjoyment of, for my game between the seventh graders. It is different, but um, not as much as the sixth and eighth grades. We can safely say that kids like bacon brains. So. Overall, what can we say about my program? Yes, the students enjoyed Bacon Brains, and the intervention was effective in teaching our curriculum. We had some significant gender effects in that girls, they're going to learn regardless of a condition, but boys, they learned best when they're competing. Now, as with all research, there are some limitations, and I, this is no exception here. It's really, really tough to do a full-scale evaluation at a school. Like I said, I would have loved to have gotten that eight-week follow-up to see if the learning was persist over time. That would have been great, but it, just, it didn't work out at school. And the other thing that I think was not done as I had originally conceptualized the intervention was the, the games were treated as a standalone activity. Ideally, what I'd like to see is that teachers would integrate the games into their science education classrooms so that the games could be used alongside standard curriculum to reinforce some complex topics. Now, that, that can be a difficult ask of teachers, and so we went a step further 
and we, we made a teacher's manual, the Bacon Brains teacher's manual. And in this manual, we carefully show how Bacon Brains, the curric underlying curriculum, aligns to state and national curriculum guidelines. And then we show how we can use the games to support cross-curricular integration. So how can the kids play the games to support lessons in writing or math? We, we give examples of that and show teachers how they can do that. And then also, I think, importantly, is that we show how Bacon Brains can be used to capitalize on some of these pre-existing gender differences so they can be so we can look at collaborative versus competitive play and how that can be used within the classroom. So the, again, this was a uh, long, grueling project over six years, and there are a lot of people that I'd like to thank for their support over all these years. NIDA for their support, and particularly my project officer, Catherine Sasek, who stuck with me the, the whole time. MIMH and my whole team. Kelly, who did a whole bunch of AV work for us. Uh, Jeff Noel helped me with a lot of the st stats work. And then particularly Megan Finnegan and Kate Watkins who were with me at the school every day for two trimesters. It was a lot of work, but we had a lot of fun too. And then finally, I'd like to thank my family here for putting up with my unnatural obsession with bacon for the past six years. Um, it's been a fun project. Now, I, I should say, in closing real quick, I'd love to have you using these games. You can go to uh, baconbrains.com to actually play the games and download the teacher's manual as well. And then on the site where you got onto this web conference, you can download my slides. And on those slides, there's a complete list of references in the notes section for all of the research that I have talked about. So I appreciate you sticking with me. I was thrilled to do the project. and. I saw Tom was talking to me about some of the folks who had signed on. Sounds like some similar interests. Reach out to me. I'd love to collaborate. Thank you much. Give people a chance to uh, submit any questions using the chat box off on the right. Uh, if you have any particular questions or issues you'd like to raise with Joel at this point, also encourage you to uh, take a look at the slides. Also take a look at the site. Those links are on here. If you need to purchase CEUs, those links are there as well. Uh, Joel, when you reviewed, early on you mentioned that there were six different top topic areas. Did you notice any difference in, in the learning spread across those six topics, or was that fairly consistent? That's a really good question, and we, like I said, there is a lot of data to, uh, to go through. We've done some initial analysis of the outcomes per module, and overall we can say that that same kind of learning curve is fairly consistent across each of the six modules. Still a lot more research to do on uh, digging into the data, but overall we can say that trend holds for all six of the modules. And at the outset we mentioned that this is not your first attempt at, at this kind of uh, material being delivered to uh, kids, whether they're younger than middle school or middle school age. Um, did this one behave any differently for the learning than the others did prior to this? Did you see any differences in how, how people learned and retained information here versus in your previous efforts? I, I think overall, we all of my interventions have shown that they have been in, impactful in helping kids learn that, that underlying curriculum. So whether it be watching DVDs or interacting in live activities to su support the science education, generally the same. Um, I think where this one differs the most in the others is, I, this is, I think we did the best job here at doing some really hard science in controlling the research environment and getting a large number of kids across uh, the curriculum. And so I think from a research standpoint, this one probably stands out as, as a prime example. Do you think this type of program could be effective with adults as well? Hmm. Well, it's interesting that you ask because we, I talked a lot about the stats of using games for kids. And if, really, uh, if you look at 
look at the data, adults are playing an awful lot of games as well. Now, this particular set of interventions, while it was geared, the curriculum is geared particularly to middle schoolers, I think that adults may, may enjoy playing it, although they may find the games to be geared a little under their level of intellectual um, grasp, but I think in general the idea of using games to provide education for adults is definitely something that a lot of folks have done and especially a lot of these health, health games to impact health, health issues, we see a lot of those geared for adults as well. Any more questions coming in, so we'll wrap up today's program. Folks, thank you very much for taking the time to join us today. As I said before, there's a link to the CEUs. The uh, notes, I believe you said, were at the end of your slideshow yes. within that PDF, so the folks that were asking about that, when you pull up the PDF, you scroll down to the end of that presentation, and then you'll see the notes section that he was talking about there as well. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us. Uh, the link to the uh, Spring Training Institute is always up on the site as well. We'd like to have you join us at that program. We do a lot about uh, addictions at that program as well. And thank you for joining us today. Joel, thank you for your time, for your expertise. Well thank done. You. Thank you.